Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, this uh, presentation is Finding a Pathway to Algebra and Geometry. And I pulled this quote from John Dewey um, that was done in the 1900s. And uh, I've always been kind of anchored to this, to find out what one is fitted to do and to secure an opportunity to do that is the key to happiness. And what we wanna showcase and really show you is how can we blend this idea of academic learning and career learning into one model. Um, and so this presentation is titled Finding a Pathway to Algebra and Geometry. But before I begin, let me tell you a little bit about us. Pathway to Careers is associated with NS for Ed. Um, NS for Ed is an education and development company. One of the models I always say is we are about research that impacts practice that leads to better policy. And in a lot of cases, we do uh, large research projects and uh, we engage states in those opportunities. And we try to impact policy and practice with everything we're doing. So a lot of what I'm about to present is the the grounding of the research behind how do we find a, a pathway to algebra and geometry. First, let me tell you a little bit about our leadership team. We're a diverse group. My name is Dr. Joseph Goins. I'm joined by Dr. Danielle Talent. She's our chief learning officer. Dylan Rainwater is our director of technology. Kelly is our uh, digital uh, content specialist and research associate. Hassan Davis leads up our effort in equity and inclusion. Derek is a computer intern. And to round out the team, we have Dr. Hayes that works with our, our program and our research models on leadership. Trevor Stokes is our labor market expert to where we spend quite a bit of time trying to really understand how do we engage students in that. Francisco Garcia helps us with our migrant uh, population and Troy does our communication. So a really exciting team here that we've been building that specializes in each area that we are working on. Our model is simple. We believe that our mission is to ensure all students are career supported, career prepared, career wise, and career engaged. And we do this in a holistic approach uh, to where we wanna look at systemic tools that help students understand how we need to be career supported, our career prepared curriculum, our career wise model, and our career engagement tools. And we're gonna be going through pieces of this model um, but as I said at the beginning, we'd love to, to work with you and do this presentation for your individual service center as well. So first, let's look at some data. So what is the future of work? You know, why does this matter so much today? What we know, there's a, a, a shifting workforce landscape. I mean, if you look at history, we've had the Industrial Revolution, uh, and we've called it 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. And what we're seeing now is this rapid advancement in the automa automation, technology, artificial intelligence. Uh, and so what we're seeing in the past, change was slow. And now it's fast, you know, the ability to change is almost an instant need. Um, businesses are struggling to meet the demands of this technology and in particular addressing the workforce. So we know that additional factors, social factors, we have an aging population, we have economic factors with globalization and we have environmental factors. Um, we know uh, from research that most of the future jobs uh, are going to require technology. Um, we know that automation and globalization is going to change how that workforce looks. Um, you know, looking at the data, we know that we have to start getting students to high wage jobs. Uh, we, the data tells us that most low skilled jobs are going to be 
low wage moving forward. Um, and, you know, in the pandemic and COVID-19, some of the hardest hit people have been low wage jobs. Um, and so what we want to do is look for tools and solutions that really allow our students to develop their human skills, their technology skills, their STEM skills. Um, and so, um, uh, Bob Wise, Governor Bob Wise, uh, Alliance for Education uh, published this a few years ago. And what we kind of now understand is all uh, high wage, high growth jobs are going to require additional training beyond high school. And so what we want to do is really make that an opportunity for students. Um, you know, 30 years ago, 75% of our workforce could get a high paying job with just a high school education. Today, they really need to move beyond high school and address those uh, high wage, high growth opportunities. And what's even more, it's a big equity issue. You know, you hear the term uh, equity, social justice, and these terms today. Well, one of the biggest equity issues facing uh, our students is less than 10% of children born in the bottom quartile earn a degree of any kind. So juxtaposition that with this notion that most jobs require a certificate or a bachelor's degree to be high wage in understanding that less than 10% of those low income students earn a degree. So it's a major equity issue, one that I think education can uh, help address by blending this idea of academic and career learning. What's the long-term impact if we don't really focus on this and get it right? Um, well, I think everybody knows this. It's in the news almost every day, and uh, it was a presidential issue. Uh, right now, we are approaching $2 trillion in student loan debt. And so what's happening is our students are walking out of college with the inability to pay their student loans back for lots of reasons. Either they've majored in something to where there's not high wage, there's not growth, or there's not job opportunities for students. Um, one statistic I hope I can leave each of you with. I call it the three E's, education, employment, and economic development. Um, and I, I use these statistics sometimes to, to really drive home the point. Right now in America, we have about a 43% college completion rate. So about half of our students don't complete uh, college when they go there. Um, unemployment, what our employment, one of the reasons why you're seeing the 40%, 40% of all college graduates are underemployed. So what that really means is they've got a college degree, but they cannot find a job in their major and they are underemployed. So even of the 43% that graduate, 40% are working in underemployment type jobs. And 80% of our businesses say they cannot find the skills they're looking for. So what you have is this, problem between education, employment, and economic development. Um, and where we want to be as a company and where we want to look at our tools is how do we address this? Uh, and who comes first? Uh, I think it depends on who you talk to. If I were to talk to somebody in economic development, they would probably say, um, they need uh, a better skilled workforce. It, it is hurting their opportunity to recruit workers. If I talk to somebody in employment, they would say they need better skills and, and better prepared people. And so what does that look like in real terms? This was something that ACT had done in a survey with Jobs for the Future. And it's really a mismatch in readiness. Um, 89% of high school teachers who have been surveyed believe their students are, are freshmen ready to go to college. Uh, well, when they surveyed the faculty in a college, they felt only 26% of those students were actually ready to be on their campus. Um, so now let's jump to college graduation. 
96% of post-secondary people believe they have prepared students for the workforce. The reality of it is only 11% of businesses believe that these college graduates are ready. So we have this mismatch and it really occurs between this idea of education, employment and economic development. And our tools kind of set at that intersection of that. Um, and one of the things we believe, and we believe it pretty passionately, that not connecting students to their interest in career pathways, it really matters. Um, Gallup did a survey and they looked at uh, engagement. And what you'll notice is as you go up from elementary to middle to high school, students feel like they are not engaged. So this relevancy, we kind of lose it as they go from elementary to middle to high school. Um, a study that was done by the National Dropout Prevention uh, Network, they looked at uh, effect sizes of uh, tools and uh, what research says changes uh, a, a dropout's perspective. Number one in their uh, meta-analysis study was career development. In other words, if we show a student a career pathway, uh, there's an 81% effect size on that student remaining in school. And so uh, the research tells us over and over that relevancy and connecting to career really matters. And so one of the recommended chain, recommended ideas for changes is students need to have clear, accurate information about jobs. Schools need to Think about how do we reevaluate re learning goals? How do we understand that the goal isn't just to get a, a learner in college, it's to get a learner on a career trajectory. Um, and so what we do is we want to fill that gap uh, with our model called Pathway to Careers. How do we make sure everybody has education with destination? First, we want to make sure they're career prepared. You know, the title of this session was Creating a Path for Algebra and Geometry. And so how do we put algebra and geometry to work? Uh, and we want to talk about the, the power of purpose. How do we give a, a learner purpose? Um, we know that as a student advances through their academic journey, there's a tendency uh, that we focus on these short-term goals. And a lot of it is by demand and the pressures that are put on public education, grades, tests, diplomas. Uh, in a, in a, a lot of world, um, the purpose is to get a diploma. I once did this presentation and had a superintendent um, come up to me and he apologized. I said, what are you apologizing for? And he said, I just realized I've just been so focused on just getting my kids a high school diploma. I've never really stopped to think, are they prepared? Are they prepared for a career path? And some of those career paths, are going to be an 18 month industry certificate. Some are going to be two years in college and some of them are going to be four years of college and beyond. And so what we want to do is focus on that persistence uh, for learning critical skills that are necessary for employment success. Um, as I said earlier, about half the students that go to college drop out. Uh, most attend college without a strong career goal. Georgetown, uh, the Center for Workforce did a study a few years ago. And one of the things I found interesting was they surveyed college graduates and an overwhelming percentage of college graduates said they would change their major if somebody would have shared the labor market data with them. In other words, what is their job opportunities upon graduation? Um, you know, a good example too is sometimes we forget to look at career tech. When we look at career tech and graduation rates, it's 96, 97% uh, college graduate or high school graduation. And their education is very closely aligned to career goals. When career tech students go to college, they average college completion at about an 80%. And a lot of it has to do with what we call purpose to purpose in learning. 
um, we spent quite a bit of time looking at the research. What happens when a student has this purposeful learning goal? And what we know is, again, research tells us students are more motivated to learn. So give a student purpose, make it relevant. They're more motivated to learn. Their interest and their engagement goes up. They persist longer and their effort is better. Task and course completion, performance and retention of new knowledge are all uh, research-based ideas. So how do we bring this purpose to learning? How can we assist students connecting their learning in meaningful situations? Uh, students need to know the why behind the what to have powerful outcomes. Uh, how long and how many times have students asked, especially in math, when will I ever use this? Uh, how will I ever use this? Um, and part of what we're trying to understand and give students that purpose on is how do we create career exposure, career awareness, and career engagement all at the same time. So uh, traditional approaches to math, um, as a former math teacher and uh, someone who understands this closely, math is often taught in this abstract approach with limited connected uh, to, to concrete ideas. Uh, and this makes it difficult for students to understand why and how math can be useful. Uh, when we give students application, uh, typically what we're doing right now, we give them simple uh, ideas. And what we want to do is we want to change that uh, simplistic approach to application to concrete, but also give them relevancy. Uh, again, traditional approaches, uh, they have a tendency to create uh, a dislike for math. As a former math teacher, I can't tell you how many of my students, they would approach me and just say, I don't like math. It's not fun. I'm not good at math. And a lot of these attitudes are developed early, um, middle school. And uh, as they get these negative attitudes, it translates into poor uh, engagement and course failure. Uh, and, and, you know, the NAEP scores, while the NAEP scores are just one measure, obviously it tells a story. Um, you know, in 2007, uh, at eighth grade uh, nationwide, we were 281. Last year, we were 282. So performance in math has, has been um, very flat. Um, and the same would be true when we start to think about equity. You know, I talked about this equity idea when it comes to job attainment. Less than 10% of the low income students earn a college degree, which means they are not getting the opportunity to uh, have an opportunity for high wage, high growth jobs. Well, the same is true on our NAEP scores in mathematics on marginalized learners and underrepresented learners. Um, and so what we wanna see and develop is how do we get out of this? Uh, the PISA scores in math, uh, the United States, uh, again, continues to perform badly. So what we're going to do is now shift and talk about how do we pre prepare a solution. And what we've done is we started with algebra and geometry. How do we create this path to algebra and geometry in authentic career approaches? Um, and we have some of these models. And if you ever want some of these posters, please let us know. But what we want students to know, hey, did you know an aerospace engineer needs to understand quadratic equations and they earn $116,000 a year? Did you know film and video editors need to understand how operations and functions in math work? They earn a salary of $63,000. Our curriculum tries to address this. Operations research analyst needs to understand operations with polynomials. On average, that's an $84,000 job. Again, our curriculum is going to address this. Construction and building inspectors need to understand applications of Pythagorean theorem. Average salary, $60,000. 
Um, did you know civil engineers need to understand equations of parallel and perpendicular lines? $87,000 is that. And so what we want to do is give this very rich environment. Um, and what we've done is taken a, an approach, and uh, we really believe it's groundbreaking, is to say what we want to do is present an authentic application of math concepts in high wage, high growth opportunities. We not only want the student to have the constructive view of how, when, and why they utilize these skills, but we want to create career exposure. I like to say we have three main objectives. First, we want to improve performance on math. We want to give schools tools and resources that give them the ability to make math relevant and improve performance in math. But second, we want to change career paths. We want to give students uh, a vast experience into the world of careers. And we want to give them lots of opportunities opportunities to see career pathways. Uh, right now, we have pulled over 100 high wage, high growth occupations, and we've embedded them within our actual curriculum. So every time a student starts a lesson, they will be presented a career. Here, we are in a geometry lesson trying to understand volumes of cylinders, cones, and spheres. What we want to do is give them a career spotlight. We are going to be an agriculture engineer in this lesson. And before we start the lesson, we want the student to understand the occupation, understand the education, potential employers, what's the career outlook? Who knew a medium salary for an agriculture engineer was $77,000? The job is projected to grow at an 8% growth. And so we really want to give that career awareness. And then lastly, we want to change attitudes toward math. So by giving them purpose, can we change performance? Can we give them career exposure and ultimately change attitudes in math? And what we've done again is pull a hundred different occupations. Um, each lesson will offer uh, a de an in-depth exploration of the math concept through that career, and we are only focusing on high value careers, careers that are projected to grow, careers that are projected to have a high wage, and we've done it across all 16 career clusters. Here you're looking at a table of contents. In that table of contents, we have the lesson, we have the common core standard, and we have the occupation that we have correlated to that lesson topic. Uh, each student, the lesson will begin with a comprehensive career overview. As I said, you're looking at a career spotlight in agriculture engineer, but we're going to show the job duties, the education requirement, types of employers, the career cluster, the career pathway, the labor market, what's the wage and demand, uh, related math concepts, and common work tasks. Uh, what we want to do is create this exposure to the student, give them the ability to have a wide range of careers. The student, when they're on the system, all of our lessons are digital. They will be able to save not only their work in the, uh, the actual lesson, but they will also be able to save the career so they can create a portfolio of careers that interest them through academic learning. So here's an example. When a student starts a lesson, they will step into that career. We will present the lesson objective. Uh, the student will remain an agriculture engineer. Here we are designing a farm storage system and we've got to calculate the volume of our cylinders. Uh, next, they will apply um, the volume of a cylinder. Uh, here, I'm still an agriculture engineer. Uh, we will constantly build upon that concept. Uh, these students can do this in independent learning or as class. Uh, here, again, agriculture engineer designing a commercial fishery. Uh, I've got to raise tilapia. 
And so I've got to calculate my volume. From there, they will get a chance to practice uh, these skills. So they will step into the career, they will apply it in the career, and then they will uh, practice it in the career. So here I've got to look at uh, irrigating my farmland and I've got to calculate my water. Um, and so again, we'll have quick tips. Uh, the student will devise the plan. All of this is saved. Uh, and it can be, again, independent learning or done in class setting. Um, each lesson will conclude with a check your understanding. Uh, to here, again, still an agriculture engineer. I'm doing some aqua farming and I've got to calculate the water. Uh, so the student will uh, go through a very similar process to where they walk into the career, they step into it, they apply the career, they practice, and then we check. Uh, again, each career will, each lesson will be a different occupation. Uh, as I said earlier, we've aligned everything to Common Core. Uh, we've got a table of contents. You will be able to match up each lesson uh, in a supplemental way to the material and the curriculum you are using uh, in the classroom. Um, and what we've also done is as, um, as, a, as a way to make the curriculum um, uh, uh, something that can increase the teacher's knowledge as well, we have developed a side-by-side -side lesson. And what we've done with the teacher's edition uh, we'll give the teacher the exact same lesson, but we're going to give them guided questions. So what should the teacher be walking the student through? And what we really want to do is give the teacher the tools uh, to apply the lesson. So you'll see guided questions, enrichment activities, technology uh, that the student uh, can use. And so what we've tried to do in our model is increase the teacher's uh, awareness of, um, of the career as well. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, now that we've done kind of just a real quick overview, in a minute I'm gonna log on and show you the actual curriculum, but I wanna talk about what we've tried to do with the assessment. So again, we applied the research and understanding purpose. We've tried to make our lessons um, relevant. We've done career exposure to high wage, high growth jobs. We've given teachers tools to teach the curriculum. Now we wanna link the assess assessment to outcomes in careers. Um, one of the partners we've pursued is a company called Metametrics. And they have uh, created the quantile frameworks for mathematics. So in our algebra and our geometry, we will have a beginning, a middle, and an end of the year assessment. And that quantile measure will represent students' mathematical achievement level, and it will show growth over time. So what we want to understand as a student is going through algebra and geometry is are they growing in their knowledge? This assessment is independent from the curriculum. And one of the things we've been encouraging schools widely use the assessments because the assessments will give you an indication of how well that student is growing. We can normalize that data to how that student is performing against a national average. Um, but what we can also do is measure the student's indication of their readiness to learn more complex mathematical concepts. And so we will have, again, the beginning, middle, and end of the year assessments on algebra and geometry. Um, the other things that Metametrics has done that has us excited is Metametrics went out and profiled every single occupation. And what they did in their analysis, they took those occupations and they created a low 
low quantile measure, a medium and a high quantile measure. And so what we can not only do is show growth, but with Metametrics Career Database, we can actually give the student an indication of how their learning applies to their current and future employment potential. So this is extremely exciting. And here's an example. So you're looking at a low range and a high range of um, occupations. And what we're showing is a scale range at the bottom. So what we'll be able to show a student is hypothetically, if I scored 800, we can look at those occupations and we can show a student, how are you doing by examining the math demand of career preparation? And this will, we think this will be a big motivator for students to really understand what is my career range? What are the common, um, skills and range of mathematical skills I need in order to be successful. And so really, really excited about this. Uh, and again, in a second, I'm gonna log on and show a quick model of the assessment um, that can show growth and again, apply it back to careers. So some of those key benefits, this assessment means um, results are no longer arbitrary. Uh, they're connected to meaningful career outcomes. So everything we're about is making the students learning relevant. Students will develop an understanding of the relationship between their learning and the careers. Um, and we hope that this change again means students perform better in mathematics. They create and are exposed to a wide range of careers and ultimately Ultimately, we change their attitude toward mathematics by creating a pathway through algebra and geometry. I'm going to take a break and we're going to jump on and I'm actually going to spend a few minutes showing you the tools and how the curriculum works. Again, um, thanks for uh, joining us on this presentation. I, um, I went to um, our curriculum website, which we have this uh, in our booth, you will be able to get access to this. It's just curriculum.pathwaytocareers.com. But before I jump into the curriculum, just to show a couple of things here on this website, you will be able to get a sample teacher lesson and a sample student lesson. So if you go to this website, feel free just to click and you will be able to download a lesson and uh, really get a depth uh, that you can share within your schools and within your region. Um, we also have an implementation guide. This implementation guide is how we want students or schools to implement the curriculum. We've tried to make it easy by really showcasing the process we use, how to take and make this a blended curriculum and how we can be a supplemental resource to increase what you are already doing. So feel free to check that out. We also will have the table of contents. So how do we align uh, the curriculum uh, from the lesson unit, the topic, common core to the occupation? Feel free to check out any and all of these resources. We also have a help center. In this help center, we will have tools, understanding the assessment and uh, different resources that you can click on and watch. So we have a quick start guide. So if you want to be able to preview or understand our curriculum, feel free to uh, jump in. We also have these introductory video lessons, introduction to our curriculum. This is a eight minute video understanding our, our curriculum. Uh, and so feel free to check out all of those resources that we have available uh, that you can utilize. I'm going to log into the curriculum and all I want to do in the short amount of time I have is give you a quick uh, look at how the, uh, the curriculum works. So I'm going to log on as an administrator. So I have access to class management, to my users. Uh, let's take a quick look at lessons. 
Um, again, we have created pathway to algebra, pathway to geometry. When you're on the system, whether it's a teacher or an administrator, I will be able to see the career, my common core, and my lesson. So again, I'm on as an administrator. So for example, if I want to, I can look at, wait a second, this is precision and accuracy. This is an algebra lesson. I've got my common core. So what common core uh, objectives are we addressing? Um, now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what's called a split view. And what we've created is the ability when you're on the system, uh, I'm an environmental protection agency uh, or environmental protection technician. On the left, I am seeing the, the lesson as a student would. On the right, I've got my teacher's lesson. So what the teacher can do is the teacher or the instructor can say, okay, here's my lesson, environmental protection uh, uh, person. Uh, here's my salary. Uh, here's the career cluster, the career pathway, the career outlook. It's projected to grow at 9%. What algebraic concepts do I use? Where can I work? Is this career a good fit for me? On the teacher side, they will get uh, the lesson objective, the video, and we will really highlight what the teacher should be doing and saying. So here the student, as I said in the preview, they will step into the career. So I'm interpreting data uh, using significant digits. Here we will give uh, the lesson for the teacher as well. Um, we're walking the student through the solution. Over here, we will give things like differentiation uh, for the teacher. Again, the student's gonna walk through, they're gonna apply this uh, on the job. They will step into the career again. And so what we really want is to create this model for the student and have the teacher be able to see the lesson side by side. So again, they will be able to preview these lessons here uh, as I go through this. As an example, I'm gonna jump down here to an algebra or geometry lesson. So they will be, the student or the teacher will be able to go all the way through these lessons and understand what is being asked of the student uh, as they're going through this. Here's a graphic designer, for example, in geometry, air traffic controller. Um, so as you're going through this, they will have this opportunity to um, really understand uh, the occupations, uh, what is being asked of the student. Um, uh, and let me show a quick geometry lesson before we leave that screen. So uh, I'm gonna jump in as a carpenter. Uh, so again, as a carpenter, uh, I will get the career cluster, the career pathway, the career outlook. Um, I will have to apply this in an actual setting as a carpenter, as a student, they will uh, again apply it, step into the career. So what we wanna do is create this rich uh, example of these different occupations. Uh, the other thing you will have um, is if the teacher wants to understand, we have a direct link to ONET, which is where we are pulling all of these occupational skills, the data, the career. So if you want more detailed information on that particular job, you can go there. Uh, and all of that is in my lesson. In the Career Center, the same thing is true. We will have the SOC code, the highest math, the number of years. We have also applied that quantile assessment measure. So what is my lower measure, uh, my medium, and my high measure? And you will be able to go up here and search for occupations. Uh, I can go in and look at health, and I can look at different um, occupations that need health. I will be able to look at the SOC code, the highest math, and my quantile measure, as well as if this is a bright outlook. And so we've created this approach so that they can, um, the administrator or the student, uh, the uh, um, teacher 
can go in and look and, uh, and measure this. Now let's jump into the uh, quantile measure. Um, so as I said earlier, we've created this quantile assessment in partnership with Metametrics. Uh, you will have a beginning of the year, middle and end of the year assessment. Again, these assessments will show growth over time. Um, and these assessments, as we said, are also um, measured against um, um, careers. And so we'll be able to match this assessment to actual careers. One of the things I've done here is to take a look at an algebra class. I've got 12 students. In that class, the average quantile measure is an 832. The max was 1129. Uh, I've pulled up a student here, student 13. Their quantile score was a 729. So again, I can look at their beginning of the year, end of the year, and middle of the year assessments, and I'll be able to see that growth over time. And that's what we want to be able to show with that student. So here, I can say this student's average quantile measure, how did they do at the beginning? the middle and the end of the year. And again, what we wanna be able to show is that growth over time uh, as they've gone through that. Uh, and let me show you how we take that quantile measure and we can apply it to careers. So here I've got 10 different careers on a chart and we're showing kind of a low to high range. And so what we're going to do for the student, the student will be able to look and say, okay, I scored a 750. How does that match up to my readiness? If I go change that career to say 70 occupations, um, now we'll be able to see a wide range of those skills. How am I uh, performing. And if we look at it in a different way, we can map the lower range and the upper range, and we can show those occupations versus where that student scores. And so we're really excited about what we can do with the system in connecting them both through the lessons and also to their assessment measure and how it means to them. Um, So um, that was a super short uh, overview into how we have created Pathway to Algebra, Pathway to Geometry. Again, wish we could do this in person, but we would love to work with each of your service centers. Um, again, we have links to all of these tools and resources in our booth, in our virtual booth, so please check us out. Um, I'm showing the curriculum.pathwaytocareers.com website. Again, here we have created the ability to download lessons, look at our implementation model, our table of contents. We have an overview presentation that you can share with your, um, your staff. That's a, a beautiful 10 minute overview so that people understand how and why we've created what we have created. Um, and what I hope in uh, conclusion that uh, you will reach out to us. Uh, again, we're excited. We've spent years working on this. Uh, you know, one of the things we've said when we started our company is that we would do research that led to uh, that impacted policy that led to better practice. And uh, we've not taken any shortcuts in creating an authentic experience for students the ability for teachers to make learning relevant. And uh, we believe it's gonna have a huge impact on performance as well as changing the opportunity for students to see they have the ability to pursue high wage, high growth opportunities and have a successful life. And so we're really excited about it. Please reach out to us. Um, we are a business partner with ASA and uh, uh, and we'll continue to do that for the years to come. And I'm excited to present this to us. Check out our booth. Uh, and we will continue to work with each of the service centers across the country.
Thank you for this time. My name is Dr. Joseph Goins. Feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. My cell phone number is 865-414-0033. My email address is jgoins, J-G-O-I-N-S, at N-S-4-E-D. And we look forward to working with each of you. Check out our booth. We're excited to be here and uh, work with each of you across the country. Thank you very much.